Since my last video on Conan Exiles, Funcom has brought necromancy into the game. We're going to talk a bit about Funcom's necromancy implementation and also discuss and compare it to a very good necromancy mod called Magical Thralls by Ars Gothica. I think that for the best necromancy experience, both Funcom necromancy and modded necromancy should be used together. The mod offers minions that Funcom doesn't, and it also complements Funcom necromancy with features that make Funcom necromancy easier. So I've got a lineup here, and I've got in front all of the Funcom minions, possibly not all of them, because it's a bit random which kinds you get. And then in the back, I've got all of the modders minions. So we'll begin with the Funcom ones. First, we've got the unstable skeleton, which is this guy here. He's a one hit point skeleton. He'll run into battle, and when he gets hit, he'll die because he's only got one hit point, but he'll unleash a huge cloud of poisonous gas. He's the cheapest of the Funcom minions to make. After him, you've got the skeleton fighter. He's got about 2400 hit points. And he's your sort of standard skeleton fighter. Pretty decent dude. Next up, we've got the Legion Warrior. And he's a seriously badass skeleton. Probably one of the tougher ones you can get. After him, we've got just an armored skeleton warrior. Then we've got the animal kinds of uh, minions. We've got the undead hyena. We've got the undead kappa. We've got the undead monstrosity. And we've got the white, which is a glow in the dark skeleton. He's not as strong as the Legion Skeleton, but he's sort of mid-strength, I suppose. Now in the Modder's uh, minions, we've got more variety. And they're also quite different. We've got the Rancid Zombie, which is a zombie that the Modder himself modeled. And it's really nice. It's the stronger kind of zombie you can get. The standard zombie is this guy. It's got slightly less hit points, I believe. Let me check. No, they're the same hit points. The difference is that the rancid one does more damage. Then we've got the undead fighter. 3,800 hit points. Then we've got the skeleton armor, who requires iron in the crafting process. He's a bit stronger. After him, we've got the Skeleton Commander, who's another armored skeleton, but made of steel. He's stronger again with 4,100 hit points. After that, we've got the modders version of the Defari, of the Undead Hyena, sorry. It's got 31, about 3,200 hit points. And we've got the modders version of the Undead Kappa about 3,100 hit points. We've got the modders version of the skeleton monstrosity. It's very weak. I don't think it'll stay that way. It was stronger in the past. I believe the modder's working on balance. We've got another unique zombie minion for the modder. It's called the Zombie Imp King. And to craft it, you require a zombie king, uh, sorry, an imp king's body. We'll talk more about that later, but he's a very strong minion. And finally, the strongest undead minion that the minion that the modder offers is the skeleton dragon with 10,000 hit points. It's a great minion. So you might be wondering why there's a bit of overlap of these minions. For example, how come the modder's got a an undead legion guy? It looks kind of like the Legion Warrior the Funcom implemented. And how come we've got, you know, these two guys that look very similar? And how come he's got his own version of the Undead Hyena, and Undead Kappa, and Monstrosity, and so on? Well, the reason is, is because the model was working on all of this when Funcom hadn't implemented any necromancy at all. 
So what happened was is that the modder had his zombies. He had his skeletons. He had his undead hyena and undead kappa. And that was all we had. And then Funcom released their stuff. So now you've got this strange sort of duality going on where you've got two versions of the same thing. The good news is, is that there are differences between the two. They've got different hit points. 2800 for the Funcom one. And 3200 for the modder one. Generally speaking, the modder's minions are stronger. With the exception of the Legion Warrior, who is probably three times as strong as the modest one. Maybe about double as strong. Yeah, more like double. And of course, Funcom's got the white, which the modder doesn't have. But the modder has the zombies, which Funcom doesn't have. And it's also got the Draco Lich, which Funcom doesn't have. Oh, and of course, Funcom's got the exploding skeleton fighter, which of course has no equivalent in the modders roster. Now, the reason why I think that you probably want to have both is because all of the Funcom minions are end game. You're not going to have access to these until you're max level, basically. And the reason for that is because for the crafting of all of them, except for this unstable skeleton, you require some very elite components. You're going to require fragments of power, like this. And the fragment of power is only gotten from killing bosses and stuff in the unnamed city, which is a very high level area. Secondly, you're going to be needing uh, this powder of corruption, this stuff here, which you can only get from the summoning place. Basically, you run through, you kill everyone in there, and you loot the powder from chests. It's a very slow process. You run through the place to get maybe 40 power powder. Then you've got to wait for a tool respawn, and you go in again, and you do all do it all over again. This is a very time consuming process. So the main advantage of using the mod in conjunction with the normal Funko minions is that the crafting is a lot easier. It's also a lot faster and you get a lot more level pr progression with it. You can start making low level modded skeletons at maybe level 20, perhaps even earlier and you'll be able to have access to these throughout the whole leveling up experience. And at the very end, you can get stuff like this guy. Whereas with the Funcom way, you basically get nothing until you're at max level, and then you start getting the different minions. So now that we've talked a bit about that, let's talk about how these minions are crafted. And the modder has also a better crafting system in my opinion. So how the modder does it is you've got two uh, buildings. You've got the corpse preparation altar and you've got the zombie cage. And basically what happens is, is with the corpse preparation altar, you can craft a necromantic cleaver. You can use this cleaver to carve up corpses. And when you do, you get stuff like dismembered human corpses, you get bones, and you get putrid meat and various other things. And with all that, you're able to craft a, th a body. So for example here, let's craft a skeleton armor body. For that, I need a weathered skull, 10 demon blood, 50 bones, and some raw armor elements that you craft at the blacksmith. I'll show you how that's done. Here we come over to our blacksmith here. There will be a recipe for iron and steel. And these two items are used for crafting the modder's armored skeletons. 
So if we go back to the craft, the corpse preparation algebra for a minute, what we have here is the skeleton, the armor skeleton. We're going to craft him. And you see he crafts very quickly, which is good. Then you take the body. Where is it? Up here. And you go and you put the body into the uh, zombie cage like this and you see it's crafting and it doesn't take too long this will take under a minute to craft the minion and while we're doing it i'll chuck a few other bodies in here that i've built and we'll make a few more let's see for the for the um see if we can make an undead hyena i'm not sure i have all the components looking looking where is it Hyena. Need an undead hyena head. Do I have a hyena head? I thought I did. Nope. Well, in any case, it doesn't matter. Forget about that. Actually, no, god damn it. I want to make a hyena. I've got to have a hyena head around here somewhere. Wolf heads. Croc heads. Every kind of head except a hyena one, of course. I'll probably edit this crap out, but let's check upstairs before I give up. Did I dump some in here? Oh, would you look at that? I dumped some in here. Okay. Or we'll, now that we've got our heads, we'll go back to the altar. So let's... Uh, of course, you can't find anything in here. There we go. Check that in there. Now we should be able to craft... Transmute the hyena head into the undead equivalent. That takes some time. I'll just do one to save time. Now that we've got that, we should be able to craft the body for the hyena. Oh, if I can ever find it again. There we go. It takes demon blood, bones, and putrid meat. And what I usually do is I go fishing. And I fish up heaps of fish and I just chuck them all in here. And they rot away and produce putrid meat, which I can use to craft minions with. Let's get this guy over in the cage. So you see, in the time we've been fumbling around, I've been able to craft all those bodies I threw in there. And these guys are ready to go. They can be placed on the ground. Let's place our skeleton armor. We'll put this guy just on the lawn out here. The other good thing about the modder's minions is that when you place them, they, they have a weapon automatically, a kopesh. But you can also give them other weaponry. For example, I'll give them this flawless longsword. And this guy will now equip and use that flawless longsword. I don't believe you can do the same thing with the with Funcom's minions. So now that we've covered crafting more or less with the modded guy, Let's talk about Funcom's crafting, which is a much more involved process. So for Funcom's minions, what you require is you need corrupted bone, you need weathered skulls, you need alchemical base, which is a very expensive ingredient, and you need the fragment of power I talked about before. This is for a stable animation. The stable animation will produce any kind of skeleton at random. It can produce a, stand, a bog standard skeleton warrior. It can produce an armored skeleton. It can produce a, a dead legion skeleton, which is the strongest one. Or it can produce, um, lost my train of thought there, a white. It can produce a white. For the undead hyenas and cuppers, it's a lot cheaper. You just need the demonic head and the corrupted bones. That said, getting the demonic head isn't 
trivial. You've got to go and kill a high level enemy and harvest it. For the unstable animation, it's the cheapest one. But this is very much a throwaway minion. It runs in there, gets hit, and it dies. It's good, but it's very expensive and not really cost effective at all. So let's craft some corrupted bones. Oh, we need the corrupted powder. Throw that in there. And you see it's a very slow process, but not as slow as crafting the minions itself. Wait for that. So I'm going to walk away and do something else while these are crafting. And then we'll come back and see about crafting some of these guys. Now one thing I really love about what the mod has done is he's given you this necromantic or necrotic, yeah, necromantic cleaver. And what you can do with that is you can harvest all kinds of um, all kinds of components which can be used for both crafting the modded minions but also crafting the Funcom ones. So there's a great synergy there. A good example of this is when you use the necrotic cleaver on a corpse, you get the, the body item, which is used for crafting the uh, zombies, but it can also be shredded down. And when you shred it down, you get bones. And bones are normally kind of difficult to craft. So that aids a lot with crafting. So let's take some of these minions. We'll take the unstable guy, because it's fun to watch him blow up. Take the Legion Warrior. We'll also take the unique modded thralls like um, the zombies. We'll take the Funcom monstrosity. We'll take the white. We'll take the dragon and the zombie imp king. So now we've got a good sort of representation here. We've got all the cool uh, modded ones and all of the unique kind of Funcom ones that you can't normally get with the mod. And now we'll go and destroy these idiots here in this city. they dare stand against necromancy, they'll be crushed. Right now I'll just sit back and let these guys do the hard work for me. So the skeleton, uh, the unstable animation, he already blew up. You can see that, that fog there. That's a poisonous cloud. See, if I go in it, I'll start to take poison damage. That can be mitigated using a gas mask. A mask like uh, the mask of Set, for example. Any kind of sandstorm mask. Now there is one problem, and it's not a problem with the mod or the necromancy at all, really. It's just that you can't really have more than three dudes attacking one guy at once. You can fix that though by using a mod called More Fighting by Sidewalk Surfer XX. This mod will raise the amount of minions allowed to gang up on an enemy to 20. I haven't tried it yet, but it should work fine. So now let's try this cleaver out. So we've got this corpse here. And you'll see the it got harvested. There's another corpse over here. We'll harvest this. And now if we check in our inventory, what we will have is we'll have these two dismembered human corpses. I'll just do some more killing because I want a lot more ingredients than just this. You can see it's a bit weird how the how the thralls in uh, Korean Exiles work. They don't attack anything until you attack or you get attacked. So they're kind of a strange neutral entity. But only while they're following you. 
can see the white getting stuck in here. Yeah, they're doing well. These guys are doing work. Harvest a few more corpses. Another thing that the mod does is it lets you get skulls whenever you hit a corpse. And now it's just made a liar of me. Did I get a withered skull there? Let's see. Skull. Nope. It might require a special weapon. Or maybe that got changed into the shredding mechanic or the cleaver. It used to be that when you struck the corpse with a, a hatchet or whatever, it would give you a withered skull. And this was a feature added specifically by the mod. It used to be very, very difficult to get skulls in Conan Exiles. All right, so let's get back into the building. I'll just tell all the guys here to stop following me. Because otherwise they'll all get caught in here and it'll be a pain. Just get in here. Oh, yeah, I'll shred the corpses for you. So when you need bones and stuff, what you do is you bring the dismembered corpses to the altar and you click on corpse slaughtering. What happens is, is it will shred the corpse and it gives you bones. It also gives you other components like weathered skulls, which we will actually need to craft the Funcom ones. So this is what I'm talking about with the good synergy between the mod and the game is that the mod lets you craft the Funcom minions much, much more easily. So let's chuck the skulls. into the cauldron here and then what we'll do is in the time that we were slaughtering in the village we crafted these corrupted bones so now what we'll do is we will craft some funko minions i'm going to chuck the fragment of power in there so we can make a decent minion not the unstable one let's see let's get Oh, we need the alchemical base as well. Maybe I've got that in stock. Yeah, I do have that in stock. Just for the record, to craft an alchemical base, you require silver dust, gold dust, and ichor. Now, ichor is not too bad to get, but you can imagine that gold dust and silver dust are a bit more rare and harder to obtain. Alchemical base. Chuck that in there. Now we can finally craft a fun com minion. Let's get a stable animation. Now, watch this. This will literally take hours. See that tiny little bit of progress? And this is with a level 3 alchemist, which is the second best in the game, which speeds up the crafting process. Now this will literally take... Prob might not be done this afternoon. It takes that long. You can already see a problem with the Funcom minion. The next great thing about it is that the, the minions will expire before you place them. So you can see the modder, he's got his minions expiring in 167 days or whatever. A huge amount of time to place your, your minions. Funcom on the other hand, for the unstable animation, you get about an hour. So if you walk away and do other things for a while, and you don't return fast enough, all of this hard work you've done will just be chucked down the drain because the minion that, you, that took four hours to craft will expire in an hour, for example, which is really bad. I believe with the stable animations and these guys, they take a bit longer to expire, but it's still not as long as with the modder. The modder gives you a much longer time frame to be able to place your guys. So that's something that really peeved me off about the Funcom system. So basically what will happen is, in an entire afternoon, or however long it takes, maybe till tomorrow, we will get a random minion item, 
and it could be any one of the skeletons from the lineup I showed you before. I'll just go back to the lineup. It's completely random. You could get either an armored skeleton like this guy, or you could get a white, which is the glowing guy. It's still over here. I'll go back over there. So you could get a bog standard skeleton. You could get a white. You could get the incredibly good skeleton, which is this guy, the Legion Warrior. It's all just random. Whereas with the modder, you get much more choice. You get to choose exactly which one you want, and you get to craft it in a reasonable time frame. And it's also a hell of a lot cheaper. Another essential mod for being a necromancer is the Better Frowls mod. It raises the follower limit from 1 to 5, and you can increase that further to 10. So you can have a maximum of 10 minions following you around. I'm very happy that Funcom have finally brought necromancy into the game. The implementation isn't bad, and the minions you craft are pretty good. They're not perfect though. They can be buggy sometimes, like here they're not using their weapons for some reason. This seems to only affect humanoid skeletons. But moreover, this isn't really how I'd envisioned Funcom Necromancy. You see, back in early access, Funcom promised an entire magic system which is fueled by corruption. This magic system was meant to allow for both necromancy and demon summoning. We've now got necromancy but it's unfortunately not at all tied to the very interesting magic system that Funcom originally described and promised. What I hope for the future is that both demon summoning and the corruption fueled magic system get implemented, because looting the fiery camps for purple dust isn't really what I was expecting. I was expecting to have to perform heinous acts and depraved rituals while being heavily corrupted. The more corruption, the better the minions, or something along those lines. Hopefully they implement it even better than that. Unfortunately, I don't think Funcom really wants to implement this stuff anymore, but I remain hopeful. The way they described it was really amazing. So in conclusion, Conan Exiles is now a really good necromancy game, even without mods. But for the best experience, I would recommend you get the mods I've shown you in this video. Most importantly, get Magical Frowls, because this will give you many interesting minions. It will also provide you with good early game minions to help you at low levels, and also some fantastic late game minions. It also has a very good minion construction system, where you harvest the corpses, construct the bodies, and then hang them up in the cage. Secondly, get better frowls, so you can have more than one minion following you at a time. Finally, get more fighting, so that your minions can fight more effectively. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos on necromancy games, mods, books and more.